Hi there, I'm John from cncroi.com and today we're going to talk about jigs. cncroi.com uses a lot of jigs for production. Here's an, an instance here. So we have basically over 100, 100 items being laser uh, kneeled in this case in one shot. If I was going to do one at a time it would be very inefficient because basically what you do is you open the machine you take the unit out, you put another one in, you close the machine, you start again. Open up the machine, take it out, put another one in. While doing something like this here, you actually end up with just two plates, depending on how many units. So what you do is you stick this in the machine, it takes a hundred times longer to do the whole job, but during that time you're loading up the other one that's identical, or cleaning up the post-production. There are definitely some instances where jigs are not a very good idea, uh, what I found here in the shop is that there's a difference between a theoretical and a you know, real world situation. Uh, real world would be one of our customers is a military contractor and their items are worth a couple of thousand dollars each. Now technically I could fill up the whole bed with these, machi with these parts and get them done in a fraction of the time. The issue is if there's ever a power failure, if there's ever a lens that cracks, stuff happens in the shop, uh, I basically spoil a lot of items. And to be honest with you, I can't afford to screw up, you know, $100,000 worth of things, you know. It's just a crazy amount of numbers. So for the calibration of the machine, what I do in those cases, I do one item at a time. Absolute worst comes to worst. It's never happened yet, but if ever it does happen, um, I only have that one item that's a screw up instead of about 15 or 20 of them that are all screw ups. So what we'll do now, we'll take a look at two instances where a jig is absolutely unnecessary. Uh, the first one is a couple of business cards that I made out of anodized aluminum. And in that case there, it would take longer to make a jig than to do the job. And the other one is a stainless steel, just one off. So again, one offs, why bother making a jig? It's easier just to calibrate the machine and do it right there. If you want to have like five or six or 10 or even 20 items, depending on what, what else is going on in the shop, generally you won't even bother making a jig for that either.
Now there's a lot of ways to go about making a jig. Uh, generally the material choices are between two. It's either going to be out of acrylic or MDF. Um, there's a lot of other material options, but those are just the most cost effective uh, for most applications that we do here in the shop. And this is an MDF. One would be this here and this. So these are both MDF. The advantage of MDF is that when you're doing something that gets really hot, like metal, uh, stainless steel, even brass, uh, MDF does not melt. It burns, but it doesn't melt. So what that means is that if I'm doing some stuff in here and here, the jig will not melt and curve and warp on me. Now there's also two ways of making a jig. One is just a straight one like this. You put it flat on the bed. The other one is to have a multi-layer solution like this here. Now each has their plus and minus again. This one here is you know, really quick to make. Uh, this one here takes a little bit more time and to calibrate because the bottom might not be identical to the top uh, after a couple of uses. So what we'll do now, we'll take a look at an MDF jig being created. And then after that, you'll see this a similar jig uh, made out of acrylic, which you can see here, for instance. So this is an acrylic jig, and it's a one layer or a two layer. And you can see here the top layer is where you position your stuff. And the bottom layer is just a solid platform. So this means that when you put it on the bed, you can lift the whole jig out, put another one in. Uh, if you notice here, I got holes too. Sometimes stuff gets sticky, um, especially when you're doing metal. Um, so it just helps to fl flip it around or just lift it up with your finger to take it off the jig. And here we have an example of a one layer acrylic jig, as you can see. Let's look at some real world examples of jig use. Now, I know earlier I said generally for metal we use MDF. 
but in this case here, the amount of annealing being done on the, on the dog tag, that is 304 stainless steel, was very minimal. And so the tag was getting warm but not super hot enough to melt the acrylic. So here is an example of a jig that you'll see in the next video. So the back has little holes so it's easy to push things out if they stick, which happens with metal. And on the front you can see the positioning. Now a jig is really, really nice here. And we could have technically made this about twice the size. Uh, the reason why I didn't is because I find it more efficient, depending again on the, on the customer and the project at, at hand, just to switch between two. So while one's in production, the other one is being cleaned or it's being filled. So what we'll do, and I'll take a look at that being done right now with our fiber laser beam. at how this jig here was made. Uh, this one was for uh, custom brass tags. Uh, what I showed on the video were promotional use, but we actually do them for mines and other kind of projects. Because we have a fiber laser source, uh, we're able to uh, anneal the brass in the stainless steel, but we're also able to etch it. 
So there's a lot of material options that we have available to us uh, and JIGS allows to do them cost effectively. When you have hundreds or thousands of units, um, it's very difficult to do one at a time because you literally just start to go nuts. It's the same repeatable process. So by doing it as a jig, you end up breaking it big, into bigger blocks. So that increases the precision and it also increases the repeatability. Because let's say you position this little thing a thousand times, one at a time, um, and you do them one at a time in the machine, you just get very, very tired. It's just, it's just so, so confusing after a while because you're doing the same thing over and over again. You start to lose track of things. So again, jigs are wonderful for keeping production going at a certain pace, but also keep you know, everybody's mental health uh, happy. So let's take a look at the brass tags, uh, jig all the way to finished product. wonderful tool in the shop here. We use them extensively for a lot of customer projects, but we also make them for some of our own customers. Uh, some of them are UV printers, educators, like there's just so many different applications where jigs are very useful and efficient. So if you're looking for a custom jig, contact me at cncroi.com. It really helps if you send a CAD file and to give me an idea of what the jig will be used for production wise, because it would help uh, eliminate uh, what materials we should or should not use. Um, the sizing and all that kind of stuff. So I look forward to talking to you soon.